now and then I can just cut off the start bit. Okay, so um, this is the Fury of Dracula Digital Edition screen for uh, Tabletop Fest here on Steam. Uh, we're going to be playing some Fury of Dracula Digital Edition uh, with Kenneth Height. Uh, Kenneth, do you want to introduce yourself? Or? Um, yeah, I'm uh, Kenneth Height. I'm a role-playing game designer and writer uh, in the vampire universe. Mm -hmm. I designed the uh, vampire spy thriller Knights Black Agents and uh, the fifth edition of Vampire the Masquerade. I was lead designer on that. And for Knights Black Agents, I co-authored with Gareth Hanrahan the Dracula Dossier, which is uh, a improvisational collaborative mega campaign in which you, the player characters, I discovered that uh, the novel Dracula was a disinformation op by British intelligence to cover up their failed attempt to recruit a vampire. And uh, you discover that said vampire, Dracula, is still around and that they've tried to recruit him again, which can only end in disaster and tears, and a great deal of blood. So you have to dodge MI6 while hunting and killing Dracula. That's sort of the, the, the job of the campaign. But you, as the players, pick your clues out of the unredacted version of the novel Dracula, which Gareth and I uh, expanded the novel by 25% to reinsert all the sources and methods and the other stuff that uh, British intelligence took out, uh, and then larded the thing with footnotes uh, for clue uh, triggers so that when you follow them, uh, that leads you to a mysterious person or a location or a, uh, an organization or you find a weird artifact uh, whatever it is uh, you and the uh, game master are sort of creating the story together because you're saying this is an interesting book and the GM is saying well by not coincidence that hook can apply to anything in the campaign because here it is that's how they've set it up <laughs> yeah, so no I'm... two sessions of the Dracula dossier are the, or no two campaigns are the same mm. Uh, the same group could play it twice in a row and get an entirely different story out of it, yeah. just based on what they wanted to do at the time. So that was that was a great deal of work and a great deal of fun, and I think Gareth and I uh, did a pretty good job with that. Uh, yeah. So uh, along with that, I also wrote a book called The Thrill of Dracula, which is about uh, Dracula as a, uh, a story connect uh, made up of a conjuries of, of myth themes and story elements and how those elements get used by the novel and by the play and by the movies and by the radio show and by all the sort of many, many different versions of Dracula uh, and how you can sort of take comfort from that and then you can plug and play your own version of Dracula at the tabletop. So that's sort of, you know, look, Hammer Films did it, you can do it, sort mm -hmm. of an attitude. Yeah. Yeah, so very, very much the uh, Dracula board game uh, tabletop crossover expert. <laughs> well, uh, role-playing game. Board games, I think, is, is your bailiwick. Oh, yeah, more, well, we're, more we're much point. more in the uh, board game space, but, you know, tabletop board game, it all blends we're together all buddies. if you start playing enough. <laughs> we're all dice chuckers together, although in this case exactly. they're virtual electronic dice. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I think when I was um, reading some of the stuff that you've been working on, like it's just crazy how much you've been involved with like the story of Dracula, um, looking at how Dracula's changed over the years, um, like how you can interpret the story of Dracula, like you yourself have taken the story of Dracula and like added so much to it, like you can play so much with the story of Dracula. It's it's a really it's an amazing novel just mm. by itself. I mean, Gareth and I I think between us probably read it twenty times during that two year period when we were writing Dracula dossier, and it never got boring. It yeah. never got old. There was always new stuff springing out of us. The the novel is just very you know it, it's deep in. I don't want to say that it's like you know you know what James Joyce deep, but it's deep in the sense that there's a lot to get through before you get to the bottom of it. Oh yeah, and it um. Uh, and it just is gloriously full of little details that seem to maybe don't make a ton of sense right then. And then if you think about it, you're like, well, there can be a lot of explanations and none of them are good. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's just a, a, a great source text. It's, you know, there's a reason that it sort of started a whole genre of, of novels in a way that very, very few novels ever have, yeah. or probably ever will again. I mean, the, the, you can only have one Dracula and it's sort of done it, right? That's true, that's true. Like, I think the, the thing that I enjoy so much about the original novel is that if you start reading it and you're going in trying to read it in a specific way, like you're like, okay, I wanna look at Dracula, but I wanna look at it as like fear of the unknown or, you know, fear of the invader coming into Britain. Like there's so much that you can read into it just on that kind of level. Mm -hmm. And everything changes once you view it in a specific light. And you can do that with so many other things. Like you can view it Dracula as like the coming in as a just a horrible force that a force of nature that no one can contain. Like there's so many different ways you can view it. Yeah, it's it's a, it's an amazing piece of work. Mm -hmm. And you know, in, in a way, that's what all great literature is, is that it constantly repays different readings from different perspectives. And I think that, you know, it's, it seems a little weird to be thinking about a big old vampire potboiler as great literature, <laughs> but you know, it, it's, it's doing its job. And it, uh, in terms of uh, sort of not just capturing your imagination while you're reading it, but capturing the imagination of a whole, not just a whole cultural industry, but I think literally everyone who's seen the movies or, or read the book or, you know, watched the you know tv shows or whatever they've all been bit uh, as it were by <laughs> by the bug right i mean it's it, it it's not just an icon because it's an icon in the way that say james bond is mm -hmm. I, I think it's an icon because there's a whole lot still going on there and you can always dig deeper and like you say read it for another meaning and it's like oh i was reading dracula as, as a misogynist text but now i'm reading it actually there, there's a huge feminist undercurrent in it that's yep. kind of subversive right or you say oh this is just a superstitious uh religious novel about a guy who hates crosses and holy water and <laughs> whatnot and then you read it, it's like no van helsing is like a cutting edge scientist and he's talking about you know charcot and he's talking about uh seismology and electricity and all these other very cutting edge things it's a techno thriller they're using dictaphones and yep. planning their steamship trajectories it, it's it's an amazing novel on so many different levels oh, while also sure. just being a rip-roaring story of a guy who drinks <laughs> people's blood like, i think that's the thing is that like i'm very confident saying that i think dracula will still be being talked about a hundred years from now two hundred oh, years from now like yeah it's never going to go away at this point right yeah dracula is like you know uh, Robinson Crusoe or Gulliver's Travels. It's just there forever. Or yeah. Hamlet, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's kind of ironic that at this point, Dracula then does actually become mortal, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so how familiar are you with Fury of Dracula? Um, I've played both the very old Games Workshop version mm -hmm. uh, eons ago, and then I've played the uh, Fantasy Flight I want to say it's the third edition mm -hmm. that I've played. Yeah, I'm not sure which Fantasy Flight one it was. It's one of the Fantasy Flights. Yeah, I, think, um, I think the third one was Fantasy Flight because I think yeah. the fourth one was WizKids, which is what ours is based on. Right. Yeah. So I, I have not played the WizKids one. I have played both the Fantasy Flight and the Games Workshop one, but I think Fantasy Flight sort of took two bites at that apple, and then yeah. I'm not sure which which version of that uh, that I that I've played. But I mean the the basic core concept of Dracula has been brilliant ever since, uh, of Fear of Dracula has been brilliant ever since that first, you know, design came out. The notion of a cooperative game, of a game with, you know, deduction to it. it very, very strong. Yeah, for sure. Uh, as, just as a, as, a, as a game design. And then, of course, also, it's about Dracula. So who doesn't love that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, there's um, another game that has a similar concept uh, based around Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Um, I think it's called um, Terror of Whitechapel and mm -hmm. something like that. But it's basically a very similar concept. But it's quite funny that um, that's based around Jack the Ripper. And, of course, when you consider, like, the possible influence that Jack the Ripper um, had on Dracula. Like, yeah. It all goes in a big circle where it's like, okay, so Jack the Ripper had influence on Dracula, Dracula then forms Fury of Dracula, Fury of Dracula then forms a game about Jack the Ripper, like... 
it all goes in circles. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, so today we're just going to play some Fury of Dracula. Uh, I'll be playing it, um, so I can show you what we've done with the digital version, um, and we can just chat about Dracula as we play, and talk about things as they come up, um, but basically use this as some nice uh, background stuff for us to talk about while we just chat about how awesome Dracula is. Yeah, right. <laughs> Okay, so, for anyone who hasn't played Fury of Dracula before, uh, it's a game in which four hunters, uh, it's Lord Godalming, uh, John Seward, Mina Harker, and Van Helsing, uh, all have to hunt down Dracula before he takes over all of Europe. So this is uh, after the original novel, um, Dracula's come back, uh, and is ready to have his revenge. He's not very happy about what happened in the novel, uh, hence the Fury of Dracula. Yeah. Um, so, in our digital version, uh, if you're playing locally, you can choose whether or not the hunters are played by the AI and you play as Dracula, or you can play as the hunters uh, and have the AI play as Dracula. Right. So, you can choose whether you want to do the hunting, or be one of the hunters. Uh, you can also got option to play with uh, local players as well. Um, so if you and four friends, uh, I know that it's not the easiest time to get four people on the sofa, uh, but if you want, you and three other people can team up uh, and try and take down Dracula. Uh, but you'll have to choose who gets the players, Van Helsing and John Seward. Um, so if someone has like a favourite particular character, uh, you'll have to choose between yourselves who gets to play as those. Alright, so, I think in order to demonstrate this, and um, I play as Dracula, I think it's a bit more exciting to play as Dracula, so I'll play around as Dracula, um, evade the hunters, and then I might play around as the hunters after that as well. Alright. be an armadillo that crawls across the board right about now. <laughs> Alright, so again, for anyone that's not played uh, Fury of Dracula before, uh, so it's set in Europe, uh, and the core concept of the game is that you, as either the Hunters or Dracula, uh, need to roam around Europe. Uh, if you're the Hunters, you try and stop Dracula uh, before he takes over uh, all of Europe. Uh, if you're Dracula, you just need to hide, get away. You don't want the hunters interfering with your plans, um, so staying away from them is the best idea. So, as you can see, uh, the hunters have put themselves down. Uh, they're really uh, going for North Europe at this point, whereas Mina Hark is all the way over in Greece. So, I get to choose where I want to start, which is always nice. Uh, so, I'm going to start over in Lisbon, Cadiz. I'll start in Lisbon. Yeah, so in terms of uh, thinking about Dracula like after the novel uh, has come out, so this is set uh, after the events of the novel, Dracula's returned and it's up to the four hunters uh, to chase him down. So in terms of taking that concept of Dracula Returns, um, how do you feel about the way that Fury of Dracula's doing it, as in it's known to the four hunters that Dracula's come back? Like, okay, we've seen all the stuff that Dracula got up to in the original novel. We can't have him coming back again. We need to sort him out. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the novel almost sort of implies that that happens. Mm. I mean, not that that happens. The novel's very clear that Dracula's dead and uh, no fooling. But when they have their little reunion, the, the the last, the epilogue of the novel where Mina is writing that, you know, four years later, uh, we met again and um, uh, Van Helsing dandled little baby Quincy Harker on his mm. knee and, and this, 
some of that is a little bit of, oh, we're just, you know, getting together like buddies, but some of it is very much the, we're getting the band back together. Yeah. Uh, uh, energy to it. Um, I always figured this is Dracula's uh, brides uh, didn't get on screen killed. I mean, Van Helsing comes out of the castle and says, oh no, I took care of it. Yeah. And first of all, I believe that when I see it. But second of all, Van Helsing was really on the edge by that point. I mean, they'd been doing their witchcraft and uh, messing with them on the circle. And we're supposed to believe that Van Helsing just wanders off by himself and takes care of the brides or that yeah. the brides don't have backup coffins. So I always figured it's not Dracula that's the the big threat. It's, it's the brides and they're basically trying to find, you know, whoever the second ranking vampire in Europe is and saying, guess what, chief, you're promoted. Yeah. Get to work. <laughs> you know, they're they're going to, to Vampire City in France or they're going to, um, uh, you know, Carmilla's house in Austria and saying, okay, here we go. Yeah. You get off the sidelines or Elizabeth Bathory digging her out of <laughs> Sashtina Castle there in, in Slovakia. Yeah. So that's sort of my headcanon for what that meeting is about. Although obviously in Dracula dossier, Dracula did in fact come back because you know, as we all know, as has been said uh, endlessly, he doesn't die in the novel the way that Van Helsing says, the only way he can die, right? He yeah, dies exactly. with a knife in his chest, not a not a wooden stake. So the fact that he's beheaded by a kukri may not be controlling. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so that like. he, he can turn into dust. They do it at exactly sundown. He's controlled that valley in Transylvania for 400 years. We think maybe he doesn't have a spare coffin just sort of squirreled away somewhere. <laughs> yeah, like what we know of Dracula, uh, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who would just go, oh, well, you know, I won't plan for the eventuality that I die. Like, I don't need to worry about that. Like, Dracula seems like the kind of guy who would say, no, 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 this is still a possibility. I'm going to prepare for that. I don't want any of my plans getting discovered, even if the worst comes to the worst. Plus, we're, we're told in the novel that he was a great tactical genius. Exactly. Uh, uh, whether or not he's Vlad Tepes, the Vlad the Impaler, is a, a different question, and one <laughs> I'm sure we can get to if we want to. But in the novel, you know, straight up says, nope, he was he was always about the sneak attack and the surprise retreat, mm -hmm. and what turned out not to be a retreat. Well, that's that's obviously setting up a, a fake out, you know, a, a, a double retreat situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And again, if you can, you know, live for a hundred years uh, and just come back and kill all your enemies when they're in their in the old folks home <laughs> I mean that's uh, that that's just smart there was a there was a uh, script for a sequel to Dracula that was never made really uh, the script was written by uh, or the treatment for it was written by the occultist manly Wade Wellman mm. and in that script uh, there's a line where Dracula's in Argentina uh, where we know, you know, Quincy Morris used to hang out from the novel. And um, a, a very old uh, retainer, you know, a very old Renfield comes up to him and says, um, Van Helsing is dead, master. And he like sits right up and he's like, okay, to, back to business. <laughs> he's like, oh, just, well, that was a nice little holiday. Just took a little mm -hmm. break. Now we can get back to it. <laughs> and then I think there's another line in one of the movies where, where Dracula says, um, uh, uh, I will wait a hundred years and kill your whole family. There's nothing you can do. Mm. Little, little stop me. I mean, I, I like the notion that Dracula's got, you know, a bolt hole, a second plan. Again, it's certainly not what Stoker intended. Mm. Um, although he did cut out the volcano for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's another thing that, like, makes Dracula so terrifying as a concept, because you can't just say, oh, well, even if we don't deal with him, it's only a matter of time before natural causes or some kind of horrible accident might take him out for us. But no, no, no. He's he's sticking around. He's a force of nature. He is the horrible accident. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. When I uh, first read the novel, it was mm. actually a little bit late. I was I, I only read it in college, mm. and it was like my freshman year in college, and I was uh, in the dorm. My roommate had gone back home uh, for you know the weekend or whatever, and I was alone in the dorm room. I had my copy of Dracula, and I'm reading it, and it's late at night, and I'm well, I'm going to stay up and make sure that Dracula's dead. <laughs> and the copy I got, I bought at a used bookstore, mm. and I had not checked to see 
that all the pages were in it. Oh my god. So when I get to literally the last two pages of Dracula, they've been torn out. So they're having the big confrontation. They've yeah. got him, you know, they, they've uh, gotten past the uh, his servants and, and uh, they're heading for the big fight and then no pages are left. Oh my god. <laughs> and I got up as early as I could the next morning yeah. and ran down to the campus bookstore and bought another copy of Dracula just to be a thousand percent sure that Dracula died at the end of the book because I was very invested by that time wow. in making sure that he was not coming back. Yeah. And then of course, you know, smash cut to me in 2016 making him come back four times. <laughs> so now you've got to think like, why would someone tear out those last two pages, right? Yeah, that was that was a super good troll whoever yeah. owned that book before. <laughs> or someone sitting there with two pages of Dracula just being like, well, if I can keep these two pages, I can keep reminding myself that he's not coming back. <laughs> That's right, they, they used it as a phylactery, wrapped it around, <laughs> put it in their, in their necklace. Yeah. I assume they were just rolling a joint and needed two pieces of skinny paper, but... I mean, that's, that's the more likely explanation, but... You can't rule that out either, I guess. Explanation? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's wild. Okay, so for anyone that's been uh, watching what's been happening in the game while we've been chatting about Dracula, uh, so we've been... Uh, well, I've been trying to evade the hunters uh, as they scour Europe for my trail. So as I've been going to new locations, uh, I've been putting down uh, cards on the trail uh, to mark where I've been. So if any of the hunters find these locations, uh, then they'll know. Uh, for example, if they search in Santander, uh, they'll know that two turns ago now, I was in Santander. So it's all about the hunters trying to find my trail. All right, we know he was here three days ago. Where could he possibly be from right. here? Where's like Where's the draw the circle on the map? How How many exactly How many like cities can he have moved by that time? Yeah, so it's all about um, positioning the hunters so so that you're evaluating all the options in that circle. You know, if it's quite a wide circle, you can say, okay, well, at least we know he's not going to be in Constanta or right. Sofia. Like, there's now, does no the, way he could get there in that does, time. Does, does the game do that calculation for you? Like, you pulled that Santander card and you're assuming that you're a live player, not a computer mm -hmm. player. If, if Is there a way you pull that card and it shows you all the cities that he could have gotten to? Uh, no, we, we leave that up to the player. Um, we leave that up to the player to evaluate yeah. because there's so many different ways that he could go uh, mm. and because we want to focus a lot on the uh, hunter uh, element of it I think mm -hmm. having the computer calculate it for you would kind of take away some of that magic right so now that I've moved to Bordeaux uh, currently all the hunters seem to be uh, really fixated on on the Baltic yeah, they're really uh, narrowing that down. Uh, however, Mina is kind of moving in this direction. Mm -hmm. So I kind of don't want her to uh, discover. We also have the uh, vampire... Um, what's it called? It's the... There's a pin that the hunters can put down that shows where they think Dracula is. So right. at the moment, uh, they are really focused up on... Uh, the UK. Well, so in fairness, um, who's going to look for uh, a guy who never drinks wine in Bordeaux? <laughs> that is true. That is true. So, I think at the moment... Beautiful piece of misdirection on your part. ...to travel sort of through Central Europe, if they're focused all on the UK, and travel through here, hopefully they won't spot me in the way. But, let's see how that goes. down some account cards. So these are what Dracula places in each location that he visits. Um, the booby traps he have, leaves behind. Exactly. <laughs> they all have a range of different effects. Um, but this is so that even if the hunters are on your trail, like, 
Dracula doesn't leave a trail of roses behind him. Like, wherever Dracula's been, they're not going to come out better for it. Put down some bodyguards. Some Slovaks. Mm hmm. Knife wielding Slovaks. I think the idea of the four hunters splitting up and uh, scouring the entirety of Europe with a couple of weeks to spare before Dracula takes over is probably up there in terms of like, alright, here's a good concept for a story that you can make yourself uh, mm -hmm. set after the Dracula story. Let's have a look at where we can put that. So. And then in the, um, depending on how you, obviously in our uh, Dracula dossier, Dracula has not just the uh, division of MI6, operate, uh, Project Edom, that's trying to uh, use him as a British asset, but also he's got all manner of other allies and suborned uh, agents, just like in the novel. He's got these Slovak uh, river boatmen, and he's got um, uh, the... Uh, authorities at the port in Galatz and other places like that mm -hmm. uh, in you know you can imagine even in a fury of Dracula uh, Edwardian setting you know why wouldn't he be you know snuggling up to let's say the the, the Prussian government because they're you know Hohenzollern King is the guy in charge of Romania and so he wants to get political influence or we know that he's got you know those big stacks of Habsburg gold in his uh, mm -hmm. castle uh, from the novel, you know, maybe he's, you know, crossing people's palm with that and building himself a financial empire, oh, yeah. uh, yeah, sneaking around the, with his own agenda. That's the thing about Dracula, like, he's not opposed to underhand tactics, he's not opposed to, all right, well, if you're going to benefit me, I'm more than happy to make you, I mean, obviously Dracula is the character who has pride coming out of his ears, right? Like, mm -hmm. you'll never see Dracula work under someone. Um, but the idea of Dracula saying, no, 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 your, your goals align with mine. I'm happy for this to go forward. Right. And just think of, of uh, what he feels when he discovers that the crown prince of the Russian Empire has hemophilia. <laughs> oh, a buffet just for me? That's great. <laughs> So, when it came to the Dracula um, dossier, um, how much of the extra stuff that was um, that you guys added into there um, was that based on like, okay, here's how we can keep this fitting with the original novel, um, and how much of it was right, here's what we want to do that maybe goes a little bit against the original novel. I mean, a lot of it was just going back to Stoker's notes mm. for the novel, uh, which are in um, uh, a museum in Philadelphia and have been published. And Stoker begins the the, the note-taking process he, when he's writing down his ideas for the novel, which at the time he called Count Vampire mm. um, or the Undead. Uh, he has all kind of characters that don't show up in the final book. There's a, a police inspector named Inspector Cockford. There's a psychic. Um, uh, there's a, uh, a painter named Francis Atown. There's um, Kate Reed, who's Mina Harker's other best buddy, who's a journalist, sort of. Uh, Mina Harker is symbolically is uh, the perfect unity, right? She's both the new woman, she's professional and skilled and intelligent, uh, but she's also a perfect domestic goddess. Mm -hmm. And so sort of the sexy part of Mina is represented by Lucy Westenra and the sort of professional thinky part, it, people often think was meant to be represented by Kate Reed, if mm -hmm. Kate Reed had m made it to the pages of the novel. And so we went back and we just found every single thing that we could legitimately uh, claim that Stoker did take out because he either didn't put it in or things like the volcanic eruption yeah. uh, at the end of the book that he literally crossed out a week before it goes to the printers. 
um, in the original uh, manuscript. Uh, and so we put those all back in. Mm. And then we put in elements that would make it more uh, of a spy narrative. Okay. So uh, the, uh, you, you're familiar with Dracula's Guest, the, the short story that um, got published by Florence Stoker after Bram Stoker died. People often think that it's the prequel to Dracula. That it's uh, it, it's hard. It's it's an unnamed narrator, and he's in Munich, and um, he goes to a, a grave where he sees on the grave, uh, "Here lies the Countess Dolingen of Graz. The dead travel fast." And then uh, there is a, a, a woman who appears, uh, and and she's somehow a, she's a wolf, and she's a woman, and she's maybe going to drink his blood. And then the cavalry shows up and frighten her off, and they say, "Oh, you shouldn't have been out here." Mm-hmm. And um, uh, and people often think that that's like the excised first chapter of Dracula. That this was Harker oh. going down into um, uh, because in the in the novel he comes via Munich to uh, Transylvania, and they think, "Oh, this is just the first chapter that Stoker decided didn't work, and he cut it." But of course, it's different because in the novel they say. Harker doesn't speak German. That's a very explicit point. Yeah. But in Dracula's Guest, the narrator speaks German. So maybe they're different people. So we decided, or I decided, I guess, because this was on me, that what that actually was was Quincy Morris going down to scout out the uh, uh, Dracula's Castle. He basically find uh, Harker's diary, and uh, Quincy Morris is like, I'm going to go find out what's going on with that uh, situation. And so it's Quincy Morris becomes the unnamed narrator, and he doesn't meet uh, he does meet the the Count of Stolengen of Graz, who is a werewolf and one of Dracula's brides. And so we sort of add those elements, and then as he's in Transylvania, he runs across an, a, a a suspicious British Navy guy who he doesn't know why why is in Romania. And so we have a little bit of dialogue there, and that stuff we put in to make it more of a spy novel. Hmm. But I would say of the you know like I say we expanded the book by about 25% and of all the material we put in, very little of it was not something that either was already in Stoker's notes or something that you could have easily extrapolated from Stoker's notes. Yeah. Like we have uh, uh, Francis Atown, the artist, mm. um, in the in the notes it says Dracula can't be photographed because he looks like a corpse in a photograph. Yeah. Great. But there's no scene where anyone photographs him. So we have a scene where Francis Atown is taking a picture of a society due with the Count de Ville, which is Dracula's pseudonym, um, uh, his, his, uh, his, his cover identity, as it were. Um, and he's taking a bunch of pictures, and it turns out, oh, first of all, the big society due is a cover for the satanic cult of Dracula that gets together around him. And yeah. second of all, oh, he sees in the picture this horrific image, and that's what snaps him and makes him sort of an independent uh, psychotic hunter of Dracula, and uh, in uh, in the novel, um, when Harker and Seward are just going around asking people, "Hey, have you seen anyone weird?" Mm-hmm. and um, uh, the and, and they find the the cart company that brought Dracula's coffins to Carfax, mm-hmm. uh, but it's never explained how they found it. So we said, "Oh, he had a picture of Dracula that Francis Atown painted because you can't take a photograph of him, but a painter." could paint him yeah. so this is this is something that i believe that stoker i'm not going to say i know what stoker wanted to do <laughs> no. but we tried to stay in the head of brahm stoker and say yeah. within the conceit that we have that this is a spy story what would work within the novel mm. that what, if what you just you expanded it by 25 percent original right? source that right it's still true to mm-hmm. the the vision that you think Stoker had for yeah. what what he would have done afterwards, what he would have um, signed off on as, yep, that makes perfect sense within yep. what my version of Dracula is. Because the, the whole point of doing this is that the Dracula part of it has to feel, true is the wrong word, but has to feel true to Dracula. Hmm. Right? Uh, there's plenty of time for all of the other stuff, the the stuff, you know, in the present day for people to put their own spins on Dracula if they want. We have lots of options for that. Yeah. But the part that is the actual Dracula unredacted, the book, this thing, 
that had to feel like Dracula, yeah. right? If if we'd written a part and everyone was like, oh, well, yeah, okay, that's cute. It wouldn't have worked. It had to really have that vibe. And that's where uh, Gareth Hanrahan, Gareth Ryder Hanrahan, uh, did such a great job. And now, of course, he's a beloved fantasy novelist and everyone mm -hmm. worships him, yeah. as well they should. Um, and uh, for, for, he, for, I think he and I very much had the same notion that we had to sort of write as close to Stoker as we could, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, and still make the story work for our, our larger uh, campaign ideas. Yeah, I think that's, that's one of the reasons I think that Dracula has endured so much is because, like you were saying, you want to write more of a spy thriller, you want to focus on that aspect of it. Like, if you want to delve deep onto that aspect of Dracula, you totally can. Like, yeah. there's all these different ways you can read Dracula and all these different ways that you can expand on Dracula, not only as a character, but as a concept, really. Yeah. I mean, it seriously got to the point where Gareth and I were looking things up and thinking, are we making this up? Are we doing fiction or are we doing research? Because um, we, we, we put the volcano back in, and so I was looking for earthquakes in uh, Transylvania that we could use as you know, signs that Dracula was waking up, that the earthquake had done it. And there's lots of stuff in the original Stoker draft where Van Helsing just rabbiting on endlessly about seismology mm -hmm. and earthquakes and strange vapors from the ground. And all that got cut for the final novel, or mm -hmm. most of it did. And we, we think this has got to be a lead. This has got to be something that's important. So I went and I looked for earthquakes and I found two earthquakes almost exactly a year apart, 1893 and 1894. And I said, well, now we know what year the novel takes place in. Yeah. <laughs> because wow. that's what happens. The, yeah. 1893 is him waking up, 1894 is the castle blowing up. We're done. <laughs> um, and so once we pick those dates mm. and you start looking and it's like, wow, a lot of the heads of British naval intelligence died or took early retirement in that one year period. Yeah. And hmm. I wonder why we, that might be. <laughs> we began to think, oh, this is very weird. And then there's a mention, just an offhanded mention in the novel of the Albemarle Hotel okay. that seemingly doesn't really have a, a role. Hmm. It's like, you know, I think, I think it's Harper's like looking across the street at the Albemarle Hotel or something like that. And Gareth went and dug into the Albemarle and he discovered that the Albemarle was where a group of scientists, cutting edge scientists called the X Club, we're not making this up, uh, met in the Albemarle Hotel until they suddenly stopped in 1893. They just suddenly like... stopped. <laughs> and then uh, the head of MI5, the deputy director of MI5 during World War II, was named Jasper Harker. Again, sure. We, sure. <laughs> we, we were having... We were having definite, you know, um, uh, paranoid episodes by yeah, the end of that you, process. You've got, and you've it, got the cork board on the wall covered mm -hmm, in these different pieces of paper, yeah. all the string connecting everything. And again, I, I, and I think that's, you know, if you don't have that happen and you want players to do that, then you're, it's not going to work. But Gareth and I can promise you that this material will make you nuts if you look at it long enough. Yeah, yeah. There's plenty to dive into. I think that's like, I was talking about how, um, you know, if you want to take Dracula or the concept of Dracula you can take it in so many ways do you think that's why like vampires and Dracula do have such a strong presence in games like all types of games like video games board games tabletop like I think that's why the vampire fiction has endured so much in that area I think that's a big part of it I mean I think it's it's kind of a fun combination because on the one hand it's a very straightforward symbol and everyone knows what it means. Yeah. Right? It means sexual violence and death and disease. And mm. everyone knows that. Yeah. And it's very specific code, right? The, the fang marks in the neck, and the crosses and the holy water. And it's a very specific mythology. But then you can always, you know, it's like game design, right? You can do it in, rather than exceptions-based game design. You do exceptions-based vampire. Mm. It's always like, oh, it's Dracula, but he doesn't mind crosses or it's Dracula, but 
he's actually a romantic figure, not a violent rapist, you know? And that's where you get your Francis Ford Coppola Dracula. Mm -hmm. Or he's Dracula butt, or he's a vampire butt. And it's those exceptions that begin to sort of make little fractal Draculas around your main Dracula. Yeah. And you combine that with a novel that, like you say, you can read from so many different directions. And suddenly what is a seemingly very uncompromising, very plain, very, I don't say ordinary, but very straightforward symbol becomes a symbol that means a zillion things, hmm. right? And and so you can have a thing like um, uh, the, the Guy Madden's film of the ballet of Dracula, where Dracula is cast as a Chinese man because he's the symbol of, you know, the, the terrifying East. Yes, uh, but you can also have, you know, Nosferatu, where uh, he's uh, sort of an anti-Semitic symbol, or you can have another Dracula where he's he's just a big old teddy bear. He's just, you know, um, uh, George Hamilton. Yeah, he's, he's just, the poor, you know, hanging out. Stood guy who just right? wants to have fun with everyone. Like... And, um, and, and you can say, no, we're really amping up the sex, and he's super sexy Dracula, and since we love sex, Therefore, Dracula is a, a figure of liberation and freedom to people. Or you can um, uh, uh, make Dracula, uh, you know, sort of a, a, a Victorian hero in the way that Fred Saberhagen does in the in the Dracula tapes, where he's, he, he reads the whole novel backwards and says, well, I was trying to save Lucy Westerner on. These idiots are killing her with this stupid uh, tra blood transfusion that yeah. uh, that isn't going to work. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm desperately trying to keep her alive and after they've murdered her with the blood transfusion of course i had to turn her into a vampire to keep her alive and i mean and you can read dracula that way as this sort of not byronic rebel because it's the 70s but this sort of 70s bachelor pad rebel uh that <laughs> saberhagen's dracula is yeah and and uh and obviously you know vampires have been you know sexy and misunderstood at least going back to lefanu's carmilla I mean, sure. obviously, the first vampires were just horrible plague victims or something. Yeah. Um, no, when like, you, when oh, you read no, the, you're you're a vampire. That means that we're totally fine to send you out of our village, never mm. have to look at you again. But it's okay because you're a vampire. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got the you got the tuberculosis or the or the or the whatever it is. So yeah. go away with your creepy red eyes and your sensitivity <laughs> to light. But there's still so much that, like, despite all of those different permutations and all those different like ways that you can view Dracula and vampires it's so amazing that they still have that like if you show someone Dracula they will still recognize that they'll still yeah. recognize like oh okay like even though there's all these different ways of viewing it there's so much built into like the collective consciousness of media and society that yeah. when you see a vampire, you're like, I know what you're trying to represent with that. Even though that represents so many things, you're like, I can instantly gather, like, what you're trying to say by having that, by having Dracula involved, by having this character involved. Like I said, because it's so baked into us as a society. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a rich symbol, um, and it's, nearly omnipresent. I mean, I don't think that there's a person in the English-speaking world, probably in the Western world, mm. who doesn't know about Dracula and know about vampires. And yeah. I mean, there's um, there's a cr there's crazy uh, Hong Kong, like sub Shaw Brothers movies, where the hero is going down into hell to get the secret of true Kung Fu. And oh, they're in hell. Who's running hell? Dracula. Sure, why not? <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't he be running hell? Why wouldn't he be? <laughs> and he's just... Yeah, right. Absolutely. And just this... The, you know, there's something about it. And it's, you know, people uh, say, oh, vampires, it's a universal legend. It's, it's not a universal... There's a lot of vampire legends, but our vampire, the Eastern European blood-drinking guy, that's a fairly narrow band of what vampires are. Mm. And he's the guy that sort of took over and it's all really because of Stoker for a book that remarkably didn't sell. No. I mean, it, it sold better than most of his books, but yeah. none of his books sold. That's why he had to keep working for the theater. And he, he couldn't make Henry Irving adapt it as a play despite having basically written the part for him. But then it's like, you know, 
it just goes to show how much of an enduring novel it is even yeah. though it didn't sell well mm -hmm. the fact that we're still talking about it today right <laughs> yep yeah i mean as 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 terrible as the as the play is the hamilton dean play uh it really sort of saved the life of that book or at least kept it in the conversation mm. long enough so that people like you and me could read the book and say oh no the play's terrible don't don't watch the play <laughs> <laughs> the book though the book though we'll stick the with the book read the book read the novel it's very strong <laughs> but that uh that that's just such a such a wild ride of draft and the you know the, the very weird uh chance that, uh, that uh, nosferatu gets made and uh, uh florence stoker sues uh the german company because they did it without you know paying Mm. And every print of Nosferatu is meant to be destroyed. Yep. And, we're, and for a long time, like uh, Krakauer, when he writes Caligari to Hitler, he just has to guess as what's in Nosferatu because he hasn't seen it. And he's a great German film scholar. And then they dig one up in Argentina and say, oh, nope, there it was. There it was the whole time. Just didn't didn't destroy it. Yeah. And it's just a, the sort of insane degree of, of chance and uh, fortuitousness that's involved in that. And it, it, down to the chance and fortuitousness of Bram Stoker, of all things, pulling down a book about uh, the history of the Balkans when he's on vacation in Whitby. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, Dracula, that's a great name. Yeah. <laughs> no one will no one will ever know what that means. If it wasn't for that, like, right. the entire course of history <laughs> changes, right? right? And of course his publisher, you know, when he gets the, the novel, it's entitled The Undead. Mm -hmm. And the publisher says, you know what? Let's just call it Dracula. I think that's a better title. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. Although maybe maybe the publisher was wrong. Like I said, it didn't sell, but it's but it's become so iconic. Mm. Oh, a yeah. thing. Like, are you saying, like, I don't think there's anyone in the Western world who you say Dracula to, and they go, I'm not sure no, not what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it becomes such easy, like, shorthand for, okay, like, we'll set up Fury of Dracula, uh, the whole goal of the game is to stop Dracula before he takes over the Europe. Like, you're not going to get many people going, well, wh why would you want to stop Dracula? Yeah. Who is this guy called Dracula? Why would you want to stop him? It's like, no, Gary no, Oldman no. seems so nice and approachable, why would yeah. you want to stop him? <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's just saying really nice things. He's got a really nice smile. He just wants me to come back to his castle. What could possibly go wrong? He'll cook you a chicken. What could go wrong? Exactly. Like, there's no mirrors in the place, but, you yeah. know, everyone has different But things. that's good. Everyone's so obsessed with their appearance now. Dracula's above that. He's better than that. He wants you to be better than that. <laughs> like, Dracula is some kind of bizarre life coach. Like, yeah. No, no, don't, don't I'm sure that one's coming people. at some point. <laughs> Um, a, a, a Dracula who's got an app. Yeah. <laughs> or he's an influencer. After he figures out how that camera thing can be made oh, to work. God. I guess it's all deep fake technology, right? Yeah. That's just so that Dracula can have an Instagram account. <laughs> yeah, can Dracula take selfies? Is that a thing Dracula can do? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. <laughs> he's one of those people that never posts a picture of himself, just where he's been. Mm -hmm. Right, just just the the, the, the dinner table. Now, see, you see the, the the Hungarian chicken and the glass of, uh, of 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 Tokai there, and someone's arm is just across it. And he's like, oh, yeah. God, that <laughs> like if we talk, if we're talking about Dracula, like, and all the different ways you can interpret it, like, just imagine like the interpretations of Dracula that are happening right now, like the more modern ones that are more like Dracula in 2020, like. If Dracula came back and saw all the stuff that's going on in 2020, he'd be like, okay, you know, you guys are doing pretty good. Yeah. Well, it, in um, uh, the uh, um, Satanic Rites of Dracula, the last uh, Hammer Dracula, hmm. he's he's going to start a global pandemic. Remember, that's his plan. He's going to unleash global plague. Yeah, it's a very Dracula thing to do. Mm -hmm. like... And he's disguised as a, a real estate developer. I mean, that's very 2020. <laughs> so it's a it's 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 quite a it's it's quite a thing there. Yeah, like I said, Dracula. Like, no matter what year it's going to be, 
Dracula is always going to be relevant. There's always going to be something that's like, yeah, okay, yeah, I can see how Dracula is related to that. So for anyone that's been following the game uh, <laughs> while we've been chatting away about Dracula, uh, at the moment, so I've got these six cards at the top here that represent the trail uh, mm -hmm. that I've been leaving across Europe. And at the moment, they know that six turns ago, I was in Clermont, Ferrand. So they know for a fact that I was there six turns ago. They don't know anything more than that, but they know that for a fact. So they've got five more locations on the trail that they need to find. At the moment, all of their thoughts are like, well, at least we know he's in Clermont, Ferrand. <laughs> so we currently have these three coming up uh, from Spain. Van Helsing's all in here on his lonesome. So, my plan of going through Europe has kind of worked. Yeah. Kind of a little bit. But I think they're starting to uh, get an idea of where I am. So, Dracula can go by the sea uh, if I want to make a daring escape. But he will take damage by doing so. I don't know if it's the salt water taken out of him um, but he will take damage if I go on the sea so I can either make a beeline uh, towards Castle Dracula sort of slip past Van Helsing here or I can go down to Italy and then just jump in the sea and try and make an escape it depends on if I think that if they discover my trail then it's probably more advantageous to me to go down to Italy and then I just jump in the sea, make an escape, touch down somewhere where I can start anew, or if I think I can slip past Van Helsing, then it makes more sense to stay on land, go towards Castle Dracula, and then I can always escape uh, from Greece if I need to. Now, uh, your victory condition mm -hmm. is not just to elude the hunters for X number of turns, is it? It's to or is it? So there's a number of different ways that, that the main victory condition for Dracula is to get his influence to 13. Right. Uh, so as soon as he gets his influence to 13, doesn't matter what's happening in the game, uh, Dracula just immediately wins. Right. And, uh, and, and, your, and your influence is currently what? Hmm? What's your influence currently uh, as Dracula? My influence is currently a grand total of zero. <laughs> Dracula is uh, not spread. Dracula has been distracted by literary conversation. It's his other weakness, besides <laughs> exactly. the cross. <laughs> I'm being too distracted, and Dracula can't uh, sink his fangs into Europe properly. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a number of different ways that Dracula can increase influence. Uh, anytime he defeats a hunter, uh, his influence will go up. Uh, anytime that I manage to mature a vampire, so as I was talking about before, I'm going through each location, putting down these encounters for the hunters, right. and put down vampires. If those vampires mature, that makes my influence go up. So if they don't yep. find them yep. by the uh, sixth turn, those vampires grow up, big and strong. Uh, they can then go out into the world and spread the good word of uh, Dracula. Exactly. Uh, and also, if the hunters don't find me uh, before three weeks pass uh, so the Dracula uh, time token that we've got here uh, for each week that goes a despair right. token gets put on mm. uh, and the despair tokens have a number of different effects, they increase my influence um, when I defeat hunters, so as time goes on Dracula's getting stronger and stronger right. and the despair that the hunters are feeling is growing uh, much like Charlie in uh, Apocalypse Now Exactly. <laughs> so, Have you read, um, speaking of Apocalypse Now, mm -hmm. and honest to God, I did not mean to do this segue, but when go I said it, it, I realized. Have you read Kim Newman's uh, Francis Ford Coppola's uh, Dracula, uh, which is actually. a story in the Anno Dracula universe? Do you know the Anno Dracula universe? Nope. Go, it's go an alternate it. history in which uh, Dracula wins oh, in okay. London. He, he, he defeats the hunters, yeah. uh, vampirizes Queen Victoria, becomes the 
prince consort of England mm -hmm. and rules England. And then at the tail end of the novel, he's, he's kicked out of England, but he still has a lot of influence and there's vampires everywhere. Yeah. And in um, uh, uh, the in Romania, though, Ceausescu is very anti-vampire. And so he wants, uh, he's willing to make a movie, a propaganda movie mm. about uh, an alternate universe in which the hunters killed Dracula. Oh, okay. And so Francis Ford Coppola goes to Transylvania to make a movie that is a combination of Dracula and Apocalypse Now about <laughs> the band of hunters going up the river to kill Dracula. Yeah. And if you've ever seen the movie, um, uh, uh, what was it, Hearts of Darkness, the mm -hmm. documentary about the making of Apocalypse Now, mm -hmm. it's that. So when Martin Sheen, who's playing, I think, Harker, uh, Do nearly dies. Yeah. Uh, the vampire technical advisor they have on the set revives him and turns him into a vampire. Oh my god! <laughs> and so it's it's just an amazing yeah story, and it, it involves getting I think like three different sets of in jokes to really appreciate it, which yeah. I guess makes it just an average Kim Newman story. It's like, okay, but it's so it's very strong and great fun in, if you haven't read it. And then in and then we come out making the original Dracula, but. It's the original Dracula made in this year. It's just mm -hmm. it's too many layers. Too many yep. layers. <laughs> it's so good. It's so nuts. So meta. <laughs> yeah, so before we went on that Go to Apocalypse Now segue, uh, which is not what I expected to happen. <laughs> uh, so as time goes on, uh, more despair tokens get added uh, until we've got three total. Uh, right. And then once all three have been laid out every time dracula moves um the influence goes up and is, uh, that's the uh the dots at the right side of the board right the the red dots are those despair uh so which one's in the on the right there uh, is oh, that so not these despair? are the options that i have as all oh, these are options all right yeah. despair, i was hoping that they were uh, big ruby blobs of despair <laughs> The despair tokens get put on top of. Oh, uh, on top of the clock. Here. Okay, I got you. Because right. once three despair tokens are in play, like we're in the proper end game at that point. Mm -hmm. like, right. At that point, the hunters have like a handful of turns and mm -hmm. to take Dracula out. Because at that point, he is pretty much taking over Europe. Yep. So, in order to make sure that I can get my despair up, so at the moment. Uh, Space 5 has a aristocratic vampire lurking in there. Space 5 is Paris. So, if they don't discover that vampire in Paris um, within the next two turns, uh, that vampire is going to mature and advance the influence track by 4. Oh, yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. So, all I need to do is that three times, and then take out the hunter, and then at 13, I've won the game. Bob's your uncle. Yeah, exactly. Vampire. No. Dracula has then taken over. We're all good. Alright. So, back to the decision that <laughs> mm -hmm. I decided to make. Am I going to Italy, or am I going to Greece? You sound, you sound like you talked to yourself into going to Italy. I don't know if that was the right decision, but that was what you, you just seemed really into it. I think I will go to Italy. Let's, uh, let's go down to Italy, make a little escape, and I'll put down a new vampire, uh, because then that's another vampire set up. If they mm. don't discover it, uh, I can influ increase the influence track by three. Mm -hmm. So it's all about trying to make sure that you lay down these vampires in such a way that they're not likely to discover them. Right. So, let's see what the hunters do now. Alright, they are making a beeline to Paris. That is not what I wanted to do. Yep. Uh-oh. Alright. So, they're in Paris, but... If they don't search there, they won't discover my vampire. Unfortunately, Van Helsing has discovered that uh, I was in Milan just oh, two that's turns not good. ago. 
so they are proper onto me. Maybe that'll draw them out of Paris, though. Possibly. Yeah, so you can see here on the uh, trail at the top. Yep, yep. Uh, you the can ones see that they found. Which locations they've discovered. Mm hmm. Unfortunately, they have discovered my vampire. No! Oh. So my expert plan um, has unfortunately failed with my vampire in Paris. However, uh, I believe this is my card in Milan. So they're going to get distracted uh, by this expertly placed hoax, um, which will delay them for a turn. So Van Helsing's arrived at Milan. He's hearing all, he's hearing all these rumours. All of half of which have been placed by Dracula to mislead him. It's like, look, I've got to sort through all this. I need to know actually what's gone on here. A situation I'm sure you can empathise with, trying to work out, okay, what actually happened? <laughs> what was real? What was not? How much of this has been planted by Dracula? <laughs> or by British intelligence. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's like when he does the head fake in, in the novel, and they think he's going to Varna, but he goes to Galatz instead. Yeah, exactly. Like, Dracula is well known for saying, look, I'm going to go here. Just meet me there. You can sort me out. Look, would I lie to you? I'm Dracula. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, they know that I was in Milan means they're thinking that I could either be, because you can see here we've got the all the different roads that uh, you can take. Um, so the roads, the red, the and the railways are white and... The dash lines. Yeah, the dash lines. Uh, so they're white and orange. Um, the funny thing is, Dracula can't use the railways. Uh, he can only use the roads. And when we were first looking at Fury of Dracula, we were like, okay, well, you know, this makes sense. Dracula's moving across the area, the hunters are trying to find them. And we were like, why can't Dracula use trains? <laughs> we were like, well, there must be a reason that Dracula can't use trains, right? Like, is he morally opposed to railways? Does he just not agree with trains? Uh, and someone pointed out that, actually, the hunters can only use trains during the day. They can't use trains at night. So our theory is that the trains are only running during the day. Right. So you can't take the like, night express. Yeah, exactly. Dracula's yeah. like, well, look, trains are great and all, but sort me out a night train, and then I'll, I might be interested. <laughs> My theory, if you want to know it, is that Dracula could use a train, but since he can only cross rivers at the flood or the neat tide, if the train runs across a river when Dracula can't go across it, he's just going <laughs> to out the back of the baggage car. <laughs> and that will attract attention. Yeah, I think uh, a man flying out the back of a train would be a bit of an eye-opener. <laughs> or a coffin, or a box of dirt, whatever yeah, it is. That's true. So, so I mean, nice that's that's my thesis, is that he just, you know, trains go over running water, so he can't cross the running water, except for at these very specific times. Mm -hmm. So we've just seen uh, Mina Harker take one of those trains uh, to from. Where did she go from? So she went from down in Marseilles all the way up to Brussels. So thanks to train tickets, she can go along this route. Uh, and then all the way up to Brussels. So the hunters do have some ways to catch up with Dracula. Like, mm -hmm. the trains are quite a nice way to just cover a lot of good ground. Because um, they really need to, like, get on Dracula's trail. No. Sadly, she's going literally the exact opposite of the direction she should be going, <laughs> but still. Well, it might be that they've decided to, you know, Van Helsing, he's... He's pretty good. He might be able to take out Dracula on his own. You never know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, he took out those brides. Yeah, ask uh, him. According to Van Helsing. He, according to Van Helsing. Like, All right, Mina, look, come on. 
I've, I've got this. You know what? You know how good I am. <laughs> Mina, you just stay here and rest. I'm gonna go deal with the three vampire women. <laughs> but you used the last of your uh, of your of your consecrated host to make the circle around me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Well, guess I can't stop them from coming after me. <laughs> Too bad. So, what I was saying before about how um, if a location matures um, and manages to get past the sixth um, location, um, mm -hmm. the matured effect will take place. So, like, if it's a vampire, um, the influence track will go up. So it looks like the reason that they're hanging out around um, the top of France is because they're figuring out, okay, this is where Dracula has been. If he's placed any vampires on there, we need to sort them out. Because, you know, it's all well and good just chasing after Dracula. But if he's leaving all these vampires in his wake and we let them get away with it, like, that could also spell the end of the game for us. So, let's see if... Oh, they're all going up top. Nice. So it looks like Italy uh, was the right idea. Yeah. And all it cost was your Parisian vampire. <laughs> to get them all psychotically heading to Norway. Mm -hmm. Or Holland. <laughs> Alright. So... Let's move you here. Let's see what Van Helsing's up to. So he's grabbing some train tickets. Mina's grabbing some train tickets. Now it's back to my turn again. Okay. So, and again, you might tell me that this has some explanation within the Dracula lore, because uh, I'm assuming you're much more of a lore expert than me, but in theory of Dracula, Dracula can't go back on himself. Okay. So he can't go back to a location that's previously on the trail. So I've come from uh, Florence, and so Dracula now can't go back to Florence. Now is that just Dracula saying, look, I'm a trailblazer, I'm going where I'm going, no looking back, baby. <laughs> That's right. Love like, him and leave him. That's his way. Yeah, exactly. Like, gameplay-wise is a very good explanation. Yes. Gameplay-wise is it makes the game possible at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if Dracula could just keep going back and forth, uh, wouldn't make for a very exciting game. But No, it would not. I think Dracula not wanting to go back on himself, I'm not sure what reason there is for that. Yeah. So, they are now looking again in uh, France and Germany. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think is that, you know, and it's not even really very lorry, is that if he's gone through a city, he's probably bitten all the low-hanging blondes. It's true. And he it's doesn't true. want to have to go back and deal with all the recriminations and <laughs> screaming. He's like, look, it's, it's just too awkward if I have to go back. There'll be right. so many explanations that I can't be dealing with it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, and it's bad for the mystique when you, you show up in the girl's bedroom window and she's like, oh, you're back. <laughs> just not, not something that Dracula wants to, it's not his scene, really. No. They've now figured out that I was in Zurich six turns ago, and then I was in Milan. So, I think they've narrowed down where I left uh, this area of Europe, mm -hmm. because these locations, so that's uh, Genoa, and we've got Florence. So, if they come down to Italy, I've got two choices here. Uh, because Dracula can't go back on himself, 
I have right. to jump into the sea. That's the issue. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I can't go back through Rome. Uh, well, I could go back to Rome, but then I can't go through Florence. So right. either I jump into uh, the sea on this side of Italy, or I jump into this side of Italy. If I go on this side, I can sort of go through the sea, land in Spain, or I could go all the way around to the UK. Now the issue here is uh, Dracula takes two damage uh, when he jumps into the sea. Mm -hmm. Every time he moves in the sea, uh, that's another damage to him. I've got 15 health, so it's not the worst thing ever, but that will add up. Like there's a couple of ways that I can regain health, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I really don't want to risk that too much. It seems, it seems like, I mean, the the only downside to the very obvious thing of going to Bari and then hopping across into Albania mm -hmm. is that it's literally the most obvious move. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess the question is, you know, is the AI, does it is it smart enough to do the obvious move or does it outsmart itself like human players can be made to do? Where you're like, oh no, Ken wouldn't do that. That would be too obvious. He must be in... <laughs> Corsica, let's go chase him there. Right. Now, the downside here is that I'm not the one that programmed the AI. So <laughs> <laughs> if, you don't know I, how smart. If I knew such a thing, then I'd probably be able to like double smart the AI. So I think I'm going to go for the obvious one uh, and jump over to. At the very least, it costs you less health, which is, I think, a good yeah, idea. That's the main thing. Do it in itself. So I'm going to go over to Barry. Next turn, I can jump into the sea. So, I think I feel like I've been skipping through uh, placing down these encounter cards, uh, but I think this is a good time to just talk through some of them, uh, some of the options that you have. Uh, so, I've got two vampires that I can put down. We've already talked before about how these are the main way that Dracula can increase his influence. Uh, the hunters also have to fight the vampire they find it. Um, so you do get a little bit of, you know, Dracula doesn't do all the fighting himself. He's more than happy to say, look, I want you to go mess up uh, Van Helsing and Lord Godalming. Um, stay here until they get here. Well, they, they killed your Paris vampire though, right? Yes, they did. Uh, so unfortunately they managed to take him out. Which is definitely unfortunate, but you know, Dracula's got more, many more vampires waiting in the wings. Or, instead of placing down a vampire, uh, I can place down one of these other encounter cards. And some of them delay um, the hunters, some of them have uh, like hoax. Um, so any time a hunter discovers hoax, uh, they become delayed, so they can't move for a turn. No. Uh, if I put down some wolves, uh, they're going to attack the hunters for four damage. Uh, each hunter has a different amount of health. Um, I think Lord Godalming has the most out of all of them. Um, but if any of the hunters go down to zero, it doesn't have to be that Dracula took them out personally. Uh, if he manages to take them out through other means, uh, my influence still goes up. Right. So, I think because Bali is so on the edge, I'm going to put down a vampire because if I manage to get it all the way to the end without the hunters discovering it, then I'll have the matured uh, effect. So this is the right. normal effect if they just come across it during their search. If they don't find it, the mature effect happens. So I'm going to put down a reckless vampire. Hopefully, uh, I can make it so that they... Uh, don't find it because they'll be too busy hunting me. Although they do seem to be going after my trail at the moment. So. Let's see what we can do. I've been playing quite a bit of uh, Fury of Dracula. Um, we've just opened up the closed beta um, so that people uh, from the community can come in have a play of the game, uh, let us know what they find that works, what doesn't work. Um, and one of the things that I've been finding as I've been playing the game 
is that there's very few games that I play where, like, as Dracula, I'll go the entire game without the hunters uh, catching onto my trail, or playing as the hunters, there'll be an entire game where I just never see Dracula. Um, it seems to be quite well paced, uh, yeah. just so that, you know, you're given enough time to catch onto his trail, but not too much time that it's hard for Dracula. Three of them are surrounding Milan. Well, they learned from Paris. Very, very much grouped up in Milan at the moment. Alright. Let's go into the sea. Yeah, Dracula was not very happy about that two damage, but he's immortal, it'll be fine. <laughs> So, I'll be able to show you some combat now. So, now that Lord Delmin's moved on to um, Genoa, that's where right. I put down a new vampire. So, let's have some combat. Right. So, for anyone that's not played Fear of Dracula before, uh, the way that combat works in this game is that you have rounds, and each round uh, you have a hand of cards that you can use. Uh, for the hunters, there's always punch, dodge, and escape. You always have access to those three. Uh, and if you have any items with you, uh, some you have, like pistols, um, crucifixes, garlic, uh, you can use those in combat as well, because they become part of your hand. Uh, for Dracula, he has a uh, deck of combat cards. Uh, I believe it's five in the draw for the start of each combat. So these are your options for combat. Uh, so I can pick one of these to play, the Hunter will pick one of these to play, and we'll play them face down. Uh, and then, once we've both played our cards face down, turn them face up. Uh, and then if there's any cards that counter each other, um, say for example, uh, I try to mesmerize one of the hunters, uh, the punch card can count that out. The Dracula comes and he's like, I'm gonna hypnotize you, I'm gonna make you one of my thralls, the vampire me. Well, if I just punch you in the face, that kind of takes away that ability. <laughs> yeah, that seems... Iffy. <laughs> like, Dracula's trying to hypnotize you, trying to put all these different powers yep. in you. you know, if you just walk up to him and punch him in the face, how much you can do about that? <laughs> no, actually, there's a whole lot he can do about that, starting with biting your arms off. <laughs> you may, you may remember that scene in the mo in the in the novel where they punch Dracula. Oh, that's right, they never do that. <laughs> No one ever punches we've, Dracula we've in the spent face. A long time talking about the liberties that you can take with Dracula. Just give, yep. just give yep. us this. <laughs> That's what Dracula was missing: the ability to be punched. <laughs> People were having trouble identifying with him. They're like, I don't know. I've never been a 400-year-old Hungarian vampire in a castle, but I have been punched. So, I guess Dracula's more like me than I thought. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So. He's got a punch, but it doesn't work against claws, surely. Yep, only counts that mesmerism. Only works against mesmerism. Take that, Gadoming, you jerk. <laughs> so our art team have actually spent uh, quite a while um, putting in a lot of different stages of damage to the hunters. So it's not just a case of, oh well. I'm at two health, and I still look as good as I was at full health. Mm -hmm. uh, as the hunters get damaged, uh, you'll see it. Um, so, yeah, 
this and this is the uh, strength card. Uh, if they play a punch or crucifix or a weapon card, it's that card. Right. Uh, so this is Dracula just using his overwhelmed strength. Like, look, you can try and punch. What were we saying? You can try and punch Dracula, but sometimes he will just rip your arms off. There we go. That's what we like to see. So. A little strength. He's dodging. Ah. Ah. I do have an event card that I managed to pick up. So Dracula can use his enraged card uh, to stop one of his cards being cancelled. So Dracula's so furious that you can't even dodge him. Right. Yeah. So get down to get in there. Not a surprise he looked at the start of combat. No. But his collar's still starched. That's what you like oh, to yeah. see. Well, you know, you, you, gotta, you gotta still look classy. Mm -hmm. Still a Viscount, for gosh sakes. <laughs> uh, That's right. Just dig in under that starched collar. Mm -hmm. It's like eating the center out of an Oreo. <laughs> This is one of my thralls and not Dracula himself. I am totally fine with this vampire dies. I'm Absolutely. Not in the world of escaping. And the glorious cause of killing Lord Godalming. Exactly. Alright. So I could mesmerize. But seeing as he's only got five health left, it's time to just start going for the kill. Yeah. Stop all the fancy stuff. Let's just use some strength. Just batter him to death. Oh. Oh. Escaped. You wimp. <laughs> Why don't you get on your steamboat, good dalming, you big baby? <laughs> another downside to going into the sea uh, that I can properly show you now. So, see on the trail at the top? Mm -hmm. uh, so these are the locations that they haven't discovered yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and those have a red map. This blue one uh, shows the, the location that I was in here was the sea. Yep, was the sea. So, the hunters can then say, okay, so he was on land for four turns and then he jumped into the sea. I can say, okay, well, is he still at the sea? Like, if I carry on moving across the sea, uh, more sea uh, backs will be placed down. Mm -hmm. I go on to the Ionian Sea. Right. So now you're basically just trying to um, uh, bluff them into thinking that you went west instead of east. Mm hmm. Yep. All that item cards. It discards all of their tickets. I'll get rid of the tickets for that one. It's really, you know, the fact that the Italian trains are screwed up, you probably didn't need to leave a spy to do that. <laughs> The issue here that I've got is that they're very much on my trail at the moment. And mm -hmm. like I said, my main way of influence is maturing those vampires that I've put down. And if they're hot on my trail, that makes it really hard to do that. But that's where the benefit comes in of having uh, these despair tokens. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can see hovering over here, uh, there's three despair tokens total. And once that third one gets put down, 
um, then the uh, influence goes up every time I move. So yep. you, you can see it like coming in over the mm -hmm. timer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if I evade for a little bit more, um, I should be okay. So but now I can decide. Playing, playing this game uh, has made me realise how many places in Europe I can't pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's put down another new vampire. And see, so now uh, the hunters can see, alright, he was on sea for two turns, and now he's back on land. Right. Well, if we're all very lucky, they'll think you... No, they know you went on land first. They're not going to think that. So, I was going to say they might think you left Genoa and uh, headed around to Spain or back up into France. Yeah, because no. you can work out, alright, how many turns mm -hmm. could he have uh, possibly spent on the sea? Where could that have led him to? So, they've just resolved a Realize when I lean forward to look at the uh, at the screen, um, uh, suddenly my chin drops to the bottom of the thing. <laughs> very, very entertaining. Given that there's four of them, they certainly can afford to send one of them to Barry to check it out. Yeah, exactly. This is the issue because they're so hot on my trail, but they're all together. Like it's mm -hmm. so hard for me to split up them. Well, if Gadalmi hadn't run away like a big jerk. <laughs> well, that's the thing. If I manage to kill them, uh, that still puts my influence up. Mm -hmm. So that uh, new vampire that I've got sitting in Bali, because uh, John Stewart is on five. And then... Well, Godalming was down to five when he fled. Does he yeah. heal back? Uh, so you can uh, the hunters can rest, and um, so they can skip a turn uh, in order to get health back. So. Yeah, it's kind of a balancing act because obviously the turns that you're spent sitting there recuperating, uh, you're not actively hunting Dracula. Right. Time to lean, you have time to clean Europe of Dracula. <laughs> so, uh, down here we have all the different um, decks and cards uh, and information about that. So, you've got uh, three different decks down here. Uh, you've got the item deck, mm -hmm. uh, you've got the encounter deck, mm -hmm. uh, and then the last one is the uh, events. Yeah, so it's encounters, items, and events. Uh, so the items are stuff that the hunters can gather uh, while they're hunting uh, to help them in the hunt. So, like I mentioned before about like crucifixes, garlic wreaths, mm -hmm. uh, holy bullets, all the classic stuff. Uh, the encounters are what I put down as Dracula, uh, right. and then the event cards uh, can be used by either the hunters or Dracula. Uh, so you've got stuff that's 
only for the hunters, uh, like these, uh, and you've got stuff that's only for Dracula, like this. So, the hunters, uh, as Dracula, I can click on them, uh, and I can have a look at what they've got in their inventory currently. So I can see that Mina's got two event cards and two item cards. I can't see what they are, uh, but I know that they have them. So, like, John Seward currently has quite a lot in his uh, inventory. Um, and most of it is probably going to be pretty dangerous to me, so I can bear that in mind uh, <laughs> as I'm playing. Oh, it's mostly just souvenirs. <laughs> I've got no garlic, don't worry, don't worry. Big bottles of chloral hydrate to let him sleep. <laughs> Alright, let's put down some rats. And then let's see what happens now. Alright, got more combat. So they've discovered my reckless vampire. So it's time for the fight. I only have seven. Oh, your doming has healed back a little bit. Mm. Don't mesmerize him. He's got a fist. <laughs> That's the thing. If he doesn't use the fist. Dodge the male gaze. <laughs> Look, when you've got a top hat that dashing, like, can anyone <laughs> dodge your gaze? You can't. You can't look away. Exactly. <laughs> like, I don't know why that works, but it totally does. <laughs> I thought you mesmerized him. How come he gets to escape? Well, you know, mesmerism can only do so much. It can only do well. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> okay. So they've managed to uh, escape my vampire. So I think they're probably looking for the Barry. Doesn't that mean that they then have to go hunt him down still? To mm -hmm. Otherwise he'll grow up and become influential. So, they are probably going to figure out that, because they knew I was in Naples, and they knew I was on land for one more turn, mm -hmm. so they can probably deduce that I definitely went to Barry, because there's not a lot of other places I could go. <laughs> no, weirdly, Reggio is not on the map. So, Palermo. they now can say, alright, so Dracula was in Barry. And they went into the sea, so he must have gone here. He then went into the sea again, so he must have got here. He then went back on land, so he either went to Athens or Salonika. So, they've got a pretty good idea still of where I am, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Well, that was always the... I mean, once they went down Italy, it's basically like a big signpost pointing at where you're going. That is true. Right. I guess if you're going to try and really sell that double bluff, mm. you would have gone into the sea at Naples. Yeah, that's true. And then gone around and come back onto land in uh, Valona or Athens or wherever. That is true. Just because the the number of possibilities is bigger. Oh, Gadolin thinks he can play. Right, a little punch. That's quite a punch. 
does as much damage as fangs. And also, I think I've managed to counter. So, you know, before I was saying that uh, we're doing the beta testing mm -hmm. uh, for the game at the moment. Uh, one of the issues that we've come across is uh, certain animations uh, double up. Mm -hmm. So this guy in the coffin shouldn't be there. <laughs> but that's the joy of playing a game uh, before it's finished, right? <laughs> mm hmm yeah. You should get some rest, mm. Arthur. No, I'm fine. Ah, let me at him. Ah. <laughs> let me at him. He looks. He looks kind of like uh, Matthew Barry without the beard in that art. <laughs> you just think of like, I shall not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. I can. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. All right. I will destroy him. <laughs> All of that. Actually, uh, taking the time to heal up a bit. Yep. Whereas John Seward's. He's only on five health, but he hasn't stopped. Alright. Now, the important thing is are they going to be splitting up their forces? Because it looks like they have figured out that I must be going this way. They're sending themselves back up Italy. So at the moment, uh, we only have one difficulty level for the Hunters, mm -hmm. uh, and for Dracula as well. Uh, but in the final game, we'll have like multiple difficulty levels. Uh, so I think I'm going to give myself some props and say I'm playing against Hunters that are on like, the hardest difficulty at the moment. Yes, there you go. Yeah. It's the hardest <laughs> map. It was really... It became too hard, and I could beat them easily, but mm -hmm. other players, oh, no, I don't. We, we've oh, added a bad. simpler one now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Kind of an alpha gamer, really. Right. So, uh, definitely moving up towards, uh... Oh? John Seward's jumped in the sea? Huh? <gasps> No, so you have so much to live for, John Seward. <laughs> it's a lie. He doesn't have anything to live for. All three of them are getting in the sea. It's exciting. They think I've gone. So did they? They went to Barry, though. Did they yeah. search in Barry and find uh, the vampire you hid there? Uh, yes, they did. Oh, and that's who they were fighting. Was the top hat vampire was from yeah, Barry? That's the one. But he's still there, right? They didn't kill him. Uh, no, they killed him. Oh, did they? Yeah, once once they leave the combat, uh, he's then gone. So they've sent Godalming uh, up here after me. While those lot have gone to the sea, are they trying to cut me off here? I don't think it's fair if they can win by escaping. That's true. But, you know. Got to, I guess the theory it. is they just came back at daytime and opened up the doors. <laughs> They're like, hang on, we can just wait. These vampires, who said these vampires are hard to fight? All right. All right. But we've now hit the point uh, that I was hoping for. So see how the uh, time count now looks mm -hmm. uh, mighty upset with everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because my three despair tokens uh, are now placed on there. So the hunters mm. weren't able yeah. to get me quick enough. Uh, so now, every single time I move, this despair, um, the influence, sorry, uh, goes up by three. So now, by three? Yeah. Oh, oh wow, that's a lot. This is proper end game now. Yeah. Every move you make, every breath you take. Mm-hmm. 
but jokes on them, you take no breaths. You're a vampire. <laughs> So, oh, so they're still going to the Ionian Sea. So that might be why they've jumped in here, because otherwise they'd have to go to Barry, right. the Adric Sea, and then the Ionian Sea, so it actually works out a little bit quicker. Not that it'll help them much, because uh, I'm currently in Munich. Munich! Let's have a look where I am. Yeah, I'm in Munich. Uh, and I only need to take a handful of steps and then victory will be mine mm -hmm. I mean they managed to get on my trail pretty close but you know when you're playing against an expert Dracula player there's only something like yourself play. exactly <laughs> poor computer's just overmastered exactly so that's gonna be it put down it's the it's the deep blue of fury of Dracula AIs <laughs> and it's not it's not capable of overcoming All right. your so, native cunning. I'm now on 10, so my next move right. is victory. And they're all dinking around at the bottom of the yeah, Peloponnesus. Yeah, I think they're all like, look, vampire's taken over. We'll just hang out in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> let's, they can't kill us here! Let's just abandon... Look. Africa sounds great around that now. Right, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's just lead yeah. Europe. <laughs> Go to Tunisia, there's no map there. Exactly. He can't find us. Deserved victory for Dracula. I've won since they've added these new uh, end slates that uh, not really show off who won. So if you win as the Hunters, it's a lot more like, yes, you've taken down Dracula. He's suitably bloody. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we can see the distance traveled. See some random stats that haven't random, been uh, random finished stat. because we're in a development build. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Easily one of the finest random stats <laughs> from a young player this season. So that's Fury of Dracula. Uh, so you can play as the Hunters, uh, but that was me playing as Dracula. Uh, so what do you think? Look great. Look yeah. very much like the. Uh, it, it, it gave me the Jones to. Pull out Fury of Dracula and play it on my kitchen table. <laughs> Except that since my wife is working from home, I can't do that because all of her stuff is on it. Oh god, yeah. I'm, I'm currently recording this from my uh, home office at the yes. moment, so I definitely feel you. <laughs> I mean, my home office has always been a home office. There's nothing new here. It's just that yeah. my my poor wife can't go in to work. Yeah. So <laughs> board gaming is off the table, literally. Yep. And there's a lot more stuff on the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so we, we've uh, tried to make it as uh, accurate to the uh, original board game as possible. Uh, keep that original feel uh, while also streamlining a couple of things. So, yeah. yeah. Glad you like it. No, it looked amazing. And okay, awesome. great fun with the, with the uh, animation. That It was, uh, I think, in that sweet spot of just can't be enough. Mm-hmm to be, you know, uh, fun, but also it's, it's got a, a little groove. Yeah, I, like my personal aesthetic for Dracula, obviously, is Hammer. 
Uh, yeah. So I feel like you you're in that sweet hammer spot. Yeah, we of, definitely of, take of some influence from the uh, hammer, like the film grain effects and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Right. This game was originally made, I think it was like 19, it was like the late 80s. Yeah, 87 or something Dracula like that. Came out. Yeah. So we know that like old school fans of Dracula, Fury of Dracula, they're definitely in that sort of era. Mm-hmm. Um, so the more that we can lean into that like Dracula, Hammer Horror nostalgia, uh, the better, really. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, like I, so, yeah, you just uh, you know get those random stats fixed and uh, add some armadillos, and this thing's ready to ship. Yeah, so um, I don't know when this is going to be uh, going out because uh, this is like a previous uh, in development build. Uh, mm-hmm. But like I said, we've got our team, uh, our tiny little team here in the UK, uh, cracking on uh, to polish this up. Um, and we've got the core there. Uh, it's just tiny little things that we still need to. Tweak. I've still got the uh, tutorial because um, there's quite a lot of different mechanics. Um, yeah, it's the benefit a little of bit of a cognitive load. Digital tutorial over the physical tutorial. Like, mm-hmm. if you just sit there and flick through a pamphlet, like it's like, okay, well, I get it, but I won't fully get it until I play, right? Right. Whereas with the digital one, we can say, okay, well, we'll actually set up the game for you, mm-hmm. play through these steps. Like, I think it'll be really good for people that have never played it before as well, that's our hope. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so we've been chatting now for nearly two hours. Uh, <laughs> so I think I'm going to start closing it down now. Uh, but thanks very much, Ken, for uh, jumping on and chatting nonsense about Dracula. Uh, oh, no, no. Thanks for having me. Um, if there's anything you want to give a shout out to uh, or plug um, before we close, uh, feel free. Um, I have a podcast with Robin D. Laws, my fellow beloved game designer, uh, called Ken and Robin Talk About Stuff. And you can find it wherever you find podcasts or on Ken and Robin Talk About Stuff.com. Drops every Friday. Uh, I'm at Kenneth Height on the Twitters. So feel free to follow me and hang on my every social media utterance. Uh, and uh, if you haven't played Knights Black Agents or Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, I recommend you play one or the other or both. Sounds Play good. one and kill the other one with it. Whichever you like. <laughs> awesome. Uh, sweet. So, thanks very much, Ken. Um, no, thanks very much, man. If anyone wants to check out Fury of Dracula, uh, it's the Steam page is up, uh, so you can go wishlist it, check out the trailer, and we put an awesome trailer together. Um, and we've got loads of information about, on there about the game, and um, Add it to your wish list. That helps us out a lot because Steve add it to the add really, it to your wish list. Yeah, I, I really, really likes uh, people when they add it to their wish list. Like, really helps the algorithm uh, for a small studio like us. Like, really, really helps. Uh, you can also follow us on social media. Uh, you can we're on no at Nomad Games on Twitter, um, Instagram. Facebook, we've got Discord, uh, if you head to nomadgames.co.uk, pretty much everything's on there. So check that out. And thanks for tuning into the stream. Really appreciate it. Alright. See ya. Bye everybody. Bye.